Now I need a few more cells in this area of my table, so if I place my cursor in here, I can split this cell by using the split cell button. And if I want two rows, click OK. And then if I want more columns across here, because this is where I'm going to put my thumbnails, I can use that button again, or I can just right click, table, split cell, and I want five columns. And Dreamweaver should evenly space those columns across there. Now, sometimes Dreamweaver develops a mind of its own and creates those columns a little off size. As soon as you put content in them, and as long as there's nothing happening behind the scenes that's controlling the width of these, if we split the screen here and we look at what's happening behind the scenes, each of these cells is being automatically sized because there is no size property specified in this TD tag. But sometimes Dreamweaver will still give you different size cells, even when there's nothing in the code to warrant that. Don't worry about it if that happens to you as you're playing around with the table. Just as soon as you get your content into place, it should even itself out. You can also size cells manually. So if I know that I want this left cell to be 300 pixels, say, instead of 385, then I can use the Properties Inspector and just change that number to 300, or I can click and drag. One other thing to be careful of, if you make a left cell 300, look and see if there's a size for the right cell. I know the total size for this table is 800. So if I have a 300 pixel cell on the left, then I either need a 500 pixel cell on the right, so the total is 800, or I need to have it set to nothing, which tells the browser to automatically fill that in in the rest of the space. But it's very easy as you start splitting and merging cells, and this is kind of the advanced tip, to create cells with fixed widths that equal more or less than the total size of the table. And when you do that, you can get very unpredictable results. So notice I've been very careful here that the left cell is 300, the right cell is set to nothing, and these are equally spaced because they're also set no width, no height. A couple of other things to watch for when you're creating complex tables like this. Notice that when I put my cursor in the left side, I'm aligned vertically to the top and horizontally to the left. But over here, remember in the previous design, we wanted this aligned bottom so that the text would leave kind of a gap at the top, kind of a design trick. But now I'm going to want this aligned top. So make sure that you change that. And this time I'm going to select all of these cells, and I can apply the vertical alignment to all of them at once. The other thing I want to do to these cells on the right is to center them so that when I put images inside them, they'll all be centered. So I can do that with horizontal center. Now when I place my photos into these cells, they'll all be nicely, equally spaced apart. One other tip, you could have created a nested table here for this row of cells, and that would have been perfectly correct in terms of HTML. But just so you know, it is slightly more efficient to split and merge cells in one table than to have tables within tables as nested tables. Browsers will load the pages a little faster, the code will be a little cleaner, so whenever you can, you're better off splitting and merging cells within an existing table than using that trick of just inserting a completely new table into a cell.